When it comes to modeling styles in Verilog AMS, essentially you can use two different ways to build a model for something. One is the behavioral model, which describes the behavior of the block, and the other one is the structural model, which describes the structure, architecture, and block parameters. Here is the design of pipeline ADC stage 1 denoted by a box, having an input analog in and outputs namely, analog out and digital out. In the behavioral models, you can just write in the equations, and say, how are these outputs driven by that input? So, in the behavioral style, you essentially describe, what comes out based on what goes in. On the other hand, the structural model, is a way that says what goes in that box, like modeling the subblocks. Well, I have the same analog input and outputs analog out and digital out. What we really want to do is, take this, and put it through a sample and hold, and then, put it through the summer over here, and put this thing out here and whatever comes out here, it goes the digital block. And this goes through here, and so you describe all these little pieces of its own small flash converter that resolves n bits inside. Now if you think, which one is a better approach? Obviously, the behavioral model approach is better. Because it's a simple equation and less work, and that's why you go that route. However, the other choice is that maybe this is what is really happening, and so if you do it this way of behavioral model, what you are capturing, is just the bare bones of what happens. And, if you do it this way with structural models, you might actually get some of the limitations automatically put in this design. So, there are reasons why people go each way. This structural model tends to be more realistic, and usually used for verification purposes. But, it is not going to go as fast as the behavioral model does, which is mainly used for design purposes.